NS홈쇼핑 앱을 열면 신선하게 쉽게 빠르게 앱할수록 건강해집니다 NS모바일 Good morning, fellow advertising professionals, academics, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shin Insup, the Korean way, or Insup Shin, the Western way. The title of my 20-minute speech is The Power of Two-Line, Two-Dollar Ad. Let me introduce myself very briefly. During the past 55 years of my involvement in advertising, my primary and continuing interest has been the Korean advertising development spanning the last 150 years. After Korea changed from a hermit kingdom of the East, it transferred, transformed to the open port policy in 1876 by the commonly known Kangwa Treaty, as shown in this slide. On the left side of the slide are four pages of Han Song Jibo, or Seoul Weekly, published by Seoul City Government. The weekly published the Korea's first advertisement by Edward Meyer and Company, a German trading company based in Incheon. The paper did not last long. On the right is the independent or Tongnip Shenmun in Korean. The thrice-a-week bilingual newspaper was launched by a Korean-American medical doctor, Phillips Jason, in 1896. Realistically, The Independent was the first newspaper in Korea. Following the open policy of Korea, modern newspapers were introduced along, of course, the never-heard-of term, advertising which initially called go back or confession if translated literally. The old go back expenditure in Korea now is around 13 billion dollars. What I'd like to talk about today is an incident that occurred on December 26, right after Christmas in, in uh, 1974. Tonga Ilbo, a leading national daily established in 1920, is one of the two oldest existing dailies in Korea and has been a staunch fighter for democracy and freedom of press. Its fight for freedom dates back to the Japanese colonial days and continues after the Korean independence in August 1945. Along with Choson Ilbo, Another daily, also established in 1920, the two centennials remain guardians of the freedom of press in Korea. For your information, let me explain briefly what the format of dailies in Korea was like in the 1970s. Issued eight pages per day, the standard format of a printed page was 51 cm deep and 37 cm wide. 15 or 16 horizontal columns per page, 5 horizontal columns or half a page size advertisement per page. On December 26, 1974, two pages out of eight page issue had their advertising columns left blank. Something very serious was wrong something that has never happened in Tonga's 54 years history at that time. Tonga has been highly critical of the government, harsh oppression of the freedom of space in general and especially press freedom. The sudden disappearance of daily ads raised serious question and finger pointed to the government immediately. Shin Min, the opposition party commented, this is a serious new technique of press oppression at its emergency executive meeting. However, the government spokesman said, we don't know the facts yet, when pressed for response. 
As the daily criticism of the government continued, its repercussion and spillover to other dailies, leading possibly to a national uprising, the issue became a grave concern for the government. Fearing an ominous consequence, the government came up with a canny scheme to stifle Tonga. Pressure big ad spenders to stop advertising in the daily and its affiliates in radio and magazines. As it turned out later, the government plan was executed secretly by the almighty Korea CIA by summoning advertising managers of the leading companies or advertisers one by one, forcing them to stop placing ads in Tonga and its sister publications, including its radio. But the plot soon ran into a most fierce opposition, which was probably beyond Plata's imagination, namely grassroots protest. So Kim Inho, Tonga's director of advertising, went directly to the Korean people, asking them to place ads in the daily. His plea was placed in the paper's box set on Monday, December 30. 1974, in which he asked for what he called encouragement advertising. The advertisement, in fact, was a form of protest to the government. The response was quick. Small, two-line or larger ad began to pop up on the daily advertising columns, requested directly or through mail from Japan and U.S. later. On the New Year's Day, 1975, the first batch of encouragement has appeared on page 4, one full column of 22-line, 22-2-line, or 3-line, as included all walks of life, donating from 1,000 Korean won, or 2, two US dollars, to 50,000 won. One most surprising name was Kong Dok Hui, first lady of the former president, 1960-1962, Yun Po Sun, who donated 50,000 Korean won. However, seven of them remained anonymous, perhaps because of the possible harassment or retribution. Reaction in Japan became quite noteworthy. NHK, the prominent public service broadcaster in Japan, aired a special program, Dong-Nga's Result, of 20 minutes, on January 4th, Asai Shimbun, probably the most influential daily in Japan, continued its coverage on the development of the event along with other dailies. Also, Help of Donga, a group was organized in Japan. Similar group was launched in America by Korean residents promoting Donga's advertising. Help Donga turned into a movement after the New Year. The encouragement advertising had now become a daily feature. On January 15, the ads took, took up uh, four consecutive pages, reaching all the eight pages with such as on February 11. In addition, the size of a job jumped from a two-line to a box some reaching five full columns or even a full page. As a token of appreciation for the support, Tonga created a thank you for your support letter and a medal in a comic in late January. A blurb in the comic announcement says, looks like everybody has a medal and the Bible. The support from Academy of Noteworthy on 10th February Four noted professors of journalism at seven leading universities in Seoul expressed their support for the movement. On March 25, Hudson Institute sent this message to the newspaper. Hudson Institute and Herman Kahn acknowledge the great tradition of the Tonga Ilbo in contributing to the cause of freedom and liberty for many years in the Republic of Korea. This was a truly encouraging message by a world-renowned American think tank, 
recognizing the role played by the daily. Also, a formal Japanese ambassador to the United Nations issued an encouraging message on the same day. On April 12, a small box ad titled 118 Days of Advertising Oppression noted that 10,982 encouragement ads were placed by that day. Advertising copies varied in size, forms, and their copies so much so that if all the advertisements are combined together, it would make a copywriter's guide for political opinion ads. The ad also adopted a new logo of torch. On March 22, Donga published impacts dealt by the loss of advertising revenue of the previous three months. The summary report showed a total ad revenue of all media, including radio, at 161.5 100, uh, million Korean won, or around 330,000 US dollars, while overall the estimated loss to that 372 million won, or around 768,000 dollars during the same period. Clearly, some drastic measure had to be taken for survival. On April 1, the page per issue was reduced to 40 from 48 per week. Some staff, including journalists, were laid off already in late March, which caused considerable debate. It's a long story. The two-line, two-dollar ad campaign came to an end on July 16th, and display ads were back in full swing. Ilten Pharmaceutical, one of the top ten advertisers, placed a half-page ad on page 8 of July 21st, 1975 issue. Assessment of the uh, campaign varies depending on how one views it. Some think Donga compromised and gave in under the sustained attack by the dictatorial government, while some feel it was the government that lost the war in the long run. No matter what the various views may be, a fact remains loud and clear. The oppression and dictatorship are things of the past. And Tonga greeted its centennial on April 1, 2020, 46 years after the incident. A chapter for freedom of the press in a development, the democracy, and its good fight written in South Korea in 1975. Freedom must advertise or it surely will lose itself. An article by Tom Dillon, BBDO chairman, was reported in Advertising Age, a 90-year-old uh, street journal published in Chicago on November 21, 1973 issue. When the uh, blanket news was reported, I translated Dillon's article and mailed it to the advertising department of the deal. His whole text was placed in the paper on January 9, 1975. Five days later, an interview was arranged on the freedom of advertising by the paper. I took part in the interview along with the university journalism professor. The headline of the interview read, Without freedom of advertising, there is no freedom of press. My translation of Dylan's article said, uh, back translation, there is no freedom without freedom of advertising. You see an interesting comparison of the two most valuable headlines. In retrospect, the two-line, two-dollar Dong Ah campaign contributed more for the true understanding of another value of advertising than any other event in the 150-year-old history of Korean advertising development. The indispensable value we sometime, well, sometimes tend to forget. Final question. What was the return on investment of the two line to the lad? Good question. To answer it, let me quote a good book. 
though your beginning was insignificant, yet your end will increase greatly. Last year, Korean advertising expenditure stood at $13 billion, recording 8th place worldwide. The estimated figure for 1974 was $68.2 million. Freedom House 2020, the think tank and Freedom Watchdog based in Washington, D.C., has a map of the freedom in the world. In the huge land mass of, uh, land, uh, mass of Asia and Siberia, you find two tiny green spots, Japan and Korea, south. Thank you very, very much for your attention and listening. See you next year in Busan at Ed Stiles, Busan International Advertising Festival. Thank you again.